Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. It's Sunday the 2nd of July, that means another quarter of the year is over and that means that I normally would do my quarterly tops and flops uh, on Sunday instead of books weekly, meaning I look back at the last three months and look at the books that I really liked and didn't like. But because the 2nd of July is also exactly the mid-year point, to be precise, at 1 a.m., half the year is over, I thought I'd do the mid-year freakout tag instead, because the questions also entail the tops and flops, so I can do a sort of a mishmash of, of my normal quarterly tops and flops video and the mid-year freakout tag. Uh, the tag was originally created by uh, Earl Grey Books and somebody else I can't quite remember, because I'm stupid that way, but I will leave a link to the original tag down below. And at least I remember who tagged me, and that was Conrad over at Seven Days at Sea and Steve over at Steve Donahue. And they are both fantastic booktubers, both are in my favorite channel, top 10. So if you don't know them, which I can't even fathom that you wouldn't, but if you don't, please check them out and subscribe. There are 15 questions and I will try to restrain myself from babbling because you know how I like to babble about books, but I don't want this video to be two hours long. So I'll do my best. The first question, best book you read so far in 2017? Uh, I read really a lot of good books, even some very good books, but I only have one five-star book book so far, and that's a non-fiction book, and that's Corey Stamper, Word by Word. Uh, Corey Stamper is a lexicographer at Miriam Webster. Uh, she makes dictionaries. She decides which words to go, go in, which words go out, and the, the book Word by Word, I, I already gushed about it in one of my books weekly. It's a sort of a memoir uh, slash combined with... Um, yeah, details about what it means to make a dictionary. And this book was such a delight that it is by far the best book that I've read so far in 2017. Question two, best sequel you read so far in 2017? Well, you know me in series, so I didn't read a lot of sequels. To be exact, I read one, and that was Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, the second in the Broken Earth series. And it's the only sequel I read, so that's why I mention it, but it was certainly not the best book. It was an okay book, a typical second book in a three-book series, and it was, you know, fun to read, and I like to revisit the world, and there's some development, plot and character, but it's, it's, it's just a sort of a middle book. So I only mention it because it's the only sequel I read so far. Question three. New release in 2017 you haven't read yet, but want to. Uh, the book I uh, picked for this one is also a debut novel, uh, and I happen to have it on order, so I hope to read it next week, and that's Emily Friedland, History of Wolves. Um, it sounded really intriguing about a 14-year-old girl, Madeline, um, with hippie parents, lives in a sort of an abandoned commune in Minnesota, and there's something going on with her history teacher who is accused of uh, possession of child pornography, but also something happens, if I understand the blurb correctly, with the family that, uh, with the little boy that moves across from Madeline's home. Um, uh, Steve Donahue uh, mentioned it and he really loved it, uh, so that's the one that I'm looking forward to and haven't read yet. Question number four. Most anticipated release in the second half of the year. That was a difficult one because there are many books coming out in the second half of the year that I'm really looking forward to. Um, but I had to pick one, so I picked Celeste Ng, Little Fires Everywhere, which will come out in September. It's her second book, um, and her first one, which was really very popular, Everything I Never Told You, I liked. I thought she was she's can write really well. I wasn't so much taken with the story and the characters. I thought they were a little cardboard. But because I, I really thought this is a, an, an interesting and exciting new voice, I'm looking forward to her second book to see um, how she does it now and whether she lives up to my expectations. Question five, biggest disappointment. 
Well, I've read um, quite some disappointing books, but I, for this question, I picked a book that I was really looking forward to reading and expecting a lot, and that was Elif Shafak, Three Daughters of Eve. It's, I, I heard a lot of good things about uh, Shafak and I always wanted to read her and never did for some reason and finally picked something up and a lot of people liked the book and I just didn't. I thought it was badly written, the characters were cliche, um, the story was very predictable. I, I didn't like it at all, unfortunately. Oh well. Question six, biggest surprise. I had to think about that for a while because... If I like a book, that also means it surprises me in some way. And I don't pick up a book thinking I won't like it and then being surprised <laughs> that I like it. But there was one book that surprised me in a different way, and that's this one, um, Susan Perabo, The Fall of Lisa Bello, which came out in March. Um, it's about Meredith, a high school girl, and her nemesis, Lisa uh, Bello. Meredith's not very popular, and Lisa is the popular girl. And they both, by accident, end up in a diner. And then there is a robbery. A guy comes into the diner um, for the cash. But he also, uh, he's holding the, the cashier and the girls at gunpoint. And then he takes one of the girls, Lisa. And the whole book is about Meredith, the aftermath of it. Um, and when I first read it, I, I, I sort of kind of liked it, but I, I wasn't blown away. I thought there were too many perspectives and too many, you know, subplots and plot lines. But the funny thing is that I kept thinking about the book. Somehow it, it stuck in my mind and I reread it. Um, I liked it better the second time, even though I still had issues with all the plot lines. But it surprised me in, in that way that I didn't, like it that much and still it's one of the books that really stuck with me um, after I read it. Question number seven. Favorite new author, debut novel or new to you? Um, and I've read a lot of good debut novels but because I'm a cheat I will cheat a little bit on this question and answer with an author that is not entirely new to me but who I forgot and rediscovered and that's Elizabeth Day. Um, and I just read last week her new book, The Party, which will come out in July. I already mentioned it in my July TBR because I really liked it. And I've read her debut five or six years ago, Scissors, Paper, Stone, and then I forgot all about her, even though I liked the debut. Uh, and after I read The Party last week, I really want to read all the books in between the debut and The Party, I think at two or three novels. So even though it's a little cheat, but you will have to deal with that. Question eight, newest fictional crush? Well, as Steve Donahue would say, repeat after me. I don't have fictional crushes, ever. Sorry about that. Question nine, newest favorite character? And for this one, I go with the god, the god Apollo in the Joe Walton's The Just City. The Just City is the first one in a trilogy and I really love the book. And even though I have a difficulty with series, as you know, I did, after a couple of months, now pick up the second book and started reading it. Um, so that's how much I liked it. Um, the Just City is um, a combination, I would say, of sci-fi fantasy. Um, the, the premise of the book is that the goddess uh, Pallas Athene wants to uh, try out an experiment and she wants to see how it would be if you could live in a society like Plato described in his Republic. So what she does is she time travels um, and gets people from all over the world and every kind of time period as teachers, because you need teachers for Plato's Republic. And then there are also 10,000 children who are brought into this uh, new city. And then you see how this would evolve. And one of the main characters in the book is um, the god Apollo, who lives in the city as a human and I, I just love his character. He has everything that a good character should have. He is ambiguous, he is grey, he is morally grey, he is sometimes despicable but also very charming, he does bad things and good things and he's just really very interesting. So 
If you haven't heard of this series, pick it up if you like the premise, and I, I'm sure you will love the character Apollo just as I do. Question 10. A book that made you cry. Well, I don't really cry when I read a book, but I picked a book that made me sad, and a combination of sad and angry, and that's Louise O'Neill's Asking For It. Um, I discussed the books, uh, the book in, in one of my books weekly already. I really liked it. It's about a young girl, a high school girl, um, who is date raped and, and the video of that horrible incident is put on Facebook. And the book is all about the aftermath, how the family deals with it, how she deals with it, how her friends deal with it. And especially the, the fact that, that she feels so alone and so pressured to do certain things afterwards that she doesn't want to do made me really sad. I didn't cry, but it made me really sad. Uh, probably also because it's, yeah, it's a true story. I mean, not, not the book is not about a true story, but these things really happen and they make me incredibly sad and angry. Question 11, a book that made you happy. Well, there are a lot of novels always make me happy because I really enjoy reading them, but there's nothing that makes me more happy than books about books and writers. And I read one this year that I really, really loved, and that's Kate Bollock's Spinster. Um, it's a non-fiction book, combination of a memoir. Uh, Kate Bollock is a, a journalist, and she describes her difficulty of finding her own way, and she does that by looking to the lives of other women writers, uh, journalistic writers, but also poets, uh, novelists. And I, I really love the book. And like I said, books about books and writers, they just make me happy. So read The Spinster. It's a really good book. Question number 12. A favorite book to movie adaptation you saw this year? Well, it's the same as it was with the sequels. I saw one adaptation, and that was Hidden Figures, based on the non-fiction book by Margot Lee Shetterly about a black female mathematicians who worked for NASA in the 1950s and 60s and helped uh, develop the space program and the first Apollo rocket uh, circling the Earth. And I, yeah, I liked the movie. I thought it was okay. It was very well done, but I liked the book better because it, it was much more profound and more information ab about the women and the history. Uh, but it's the only one I saw, so I have to go with that one. Question 13. A favorite uh, review you've written this year or for Booktuber's favorite video you made this year? Well, I love doing all my videos, but um, um, the favorite video for me to make or, or the, 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 the video that I love making the most uh, was my one year anniversary booktube video. That was not a review. Um, it was on the 16th of May and it was one year on booktube. And I, I was so happy um, after the year and about, you know, the, the so many great subscribers and people who comment on my videos all the time. And I really loved it this first year. So that's my favorite booktube video that I made this year. Question 14. Most beautiful book that you bought or received this year? And I got with this one. It's a heavy one. It's Mary McCarthy's uh, a biography of Mary McCarthy, Writing Dangerously by Carol Brightman. And I found this one in a, in a secondhand bookstore for, I don't know, three euros or something or 350. And it's in really, really good condition. And I love the cover. It's a beautiful picture of Mary McCarthy. And if you're following my channel for any length of time, you know that I uh, love Mary McCarthy's work. She's one of my favorite authors. And I also know I promised you a Mary McCarthy author's gush. I will do that in the second half of the year, I promise. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good book. It's a good biography, but it's also a very beautiful book with a very beautiful picture. Last question, number 15. And it's only 15 minutes and something long, this video. Yeah, I'm very proud of me. Anyway, 15 is um, the book that you need to read or the books that you need to read until the end of the year. Um, and I couldn't decide because there are many books that I really want to read, but I thought of something else because there is, um, I mentioned already his channel before, Steve Donahue, and he does this great video series, um, Western Canyon Starter Kit, in which he gives us 
uh, books to read if we want to be well read, if we want to read the books that are really important for the Western canon. Uh, he made uh, four videos so far, so go check it out. Uh, he started with the Bible and then we went on uh, to Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, of course, the Greeks and now the Romans. And I thought, well, this is such a, a great thing to do in the second half of the year uh, to reread some of the things or read new if I haven't read them, but to really start at the beginning and read my way through this Western uh, canon starter kit. Um, so that's at least what I want to do until the end of the year. I, I hope he will keep up the series and we will finish by the end of the year. But I, I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic idea. And if you're interested, check out his videos and, and join us. So this was it for the mid-year freakout tag combination with my tops and flops. I, I'm not tagging anyone specifically because I think a lot of people have done this tag already or have been tagged. But if you haven't done it and haven't been tagged, please consider yourself tagged because it's a great way looking back uh, to the first half of the year. So this was it for this Sunday's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.